Hi, this is Crush Chessie making a video for the Ivy League today. And my video today is going to be on poker math. And what kind of motivated me to create this directed learning video and present it as my first video for the new Ivy League, which is what the site is presently, it's transferring over from Lego, is that in talking to a lot of the students I've met through Lego Poker, I've noticed that many of them find the math associated with poker pretty challenging. And I really often get asked the question, how important is being good at math in order to be a good poker player? And I think that regardless of your level of math ability, it's definitely going to be possible to with just a little bit of practice, understand enough math where the mathematical aspect of the game is not going to stop you from being a winning poker player. I mean, obviously, in order to be a winning poker player, you do need some minimal level of mathematical proficiency. I mean, you need to be able to divide and subtract and multiply and, and add. But that sort of math most of us learned in the fourth, fifth, or, or sixth grade. and Maybe the math that we continue to study beyond that, like in the 10th or the 12th grade, where they start talking about algebra and trigonometry and calculus, maybe we didn't find that math very interesting. But that sort of math I don't think is necessary to become a winning poker player. So what I wanted to do in this video is just present a little bit of the more basic math at the beginning that I think is very important. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to maybe focus on some more interesting aspects of the math for, for maybe some more advanced players. Because I know that while we have a lot of players who basically, once they got the sixth or seventh grade, started daydreaming through math class because they just found it incredibly boring and kind of now wish they paid a little more attention, you also have a lot of people who are in math-oriented careers and, and who have quite strong facility in that stuff. So I'm going to kind of gear the video a little bit to both sorts of people. and. The topics I'm going to discuss, because there's no way you can discuss every topic associated with poker math in, in just one 40-minute video, is I'm going to start off by discussing pot odds and giving us some practice and figuring them out. Then I'm going to talk about counting combinations. The third topic I want to address is how to estimate your equity on the flop. Then I want to talk a little bit about fold equity. After that, I'm just going to go through some trivia about how often you'll flop various hands. And then finally, I'm going to give a brief discussion on coolers and their effect on variance. So let's go ahead and start off by discussing pot odds. And this first slide I've kind of designed to be a little bit interactive. And you may want to go ahead and pause the video at this point and try to go ahead and figure out how often you would need to win when calling an opponent's river bet in the six scenarios presented on this slide. So for instance, in the first scenario, the opponent bets $10 on the river into a pot of $20. In the second scenario, he bets $30 into a pot of $40 on the river. So how often would you need to win to show a profit? So if you've got just a piece of paper or something handy, just go ahead and write down your answers to each of the six scenarios, kind of get a feel for how long it takes you to go ahead and, and figure these things out. And then we'll go ahead and discuss the answers. Okay, let's go ahead and have some discussion on this. So first of all, let's go ahead and review the answer. So in the first scenario, where you're calling 10 into a pot of 20, you would need to win 25% of the time. In the second scenario, it would be 30, and so on down the line, as, as you can kind of see all of the answers here. And now let's go ahead and discuss how we would know what these correct answers are. There's basically two ways you can go ahead and figure this out. The first way, which is the way I personally prefer to use, is to just go ahead and use a formula that will exactly determine the percentage of the time you need to win when calling in any given scenario. So if you're going to use a formula, the formula you want to use is you want to divide the amount you're calling on the river by the final pot size after you call. 
So for instance, in the first scenario where the opponent bets 10 into 20, when he bets 10 into 20, he's creating a pot of $30. If we call that bet, the final pot size will be $40. So the correct answer would be 10 divided by 40, which would be one over four or 25%. In the second example, the opponent bets $30 into a pot of 40. So that creates a $70 pot. And if we call, it'll be a $100 pot. So 30 divided by 100, that's going to mean we need to win 30%. In the third example, if we call on the river, the final pot will be 200. So we're calling 55 into a pot of 200. That's going to be 27.5%. And you can kind of go on down the line through each scenario and, and just work out the numbers and you'll see that you get the answers here. And to me, this is a very convenient method for figuring out the answer if the numbers are fairly round. Like in the second example, for instance, the numbers are very precise. It's 30 divided by 100. And since those are such round numbers and most people are going to know that 30 over 100 is 30%, it's very, very easy to do in your head. But when you compare that to something like what you see at the bottom in the sixth scenario where they're betting 53 into 143, well, then you need to figure out about what percentage 53 over 249 is to to get the right answer. And I mean, if you're very good at mental math, you're going to be able to do that in your head. But if you're like a normal person and <laughs> that's a difficult thing to do in your head, uh, good luck with that. So this can be a very effective formula for people who are good at mental math, or it can be a very effective shortcut if you run the numbers and you get very round numbers that are easy to deal with in your head. But if the numbers are not round and very difficult to divide in your head, then you might want to use another method. Let's go ahead and talk about that. The second method you can use to determine how often your river call needs to win or any sort of call, like it could be a flop or, or turn call too, if, if for instance you're calling it all in, is First, you need to determine your pot odds. And once you determine your pot odds, then you need to figure out how to convert those pot odds into a required winning percentage. Or you need to figure out how to use the pot odds to tell you how often you're going to need to win. So let's break that down into each of its separate steps. The first step is to figure out the pot odds. And the pot odds are simply the ratio between the final pot size before we go ahead and call that river bet, and the amount that we're calling. So, for instance, in the first example, our opponent's betting 10, and the pot has $20. So, after his $10 bet, the pot is going to be $30. So, we need to call $10 in order to win $30. And the ratio between 30 and 10 is 3 to 1. So, our pot odds, we would say, are 3 to 1. In this next example, our opponent's betting 30 into 40, therefore he's creating a $70 pot, so we need to call 30 to win 70. The ratio between 70 and 30 is about 2.3 to 1. In this example, he's betting 55 into 90, so the ratio is between 145 and 55, and that's about 2.6 to 1, and so forth. Now, I think that for a lot of people, it's going to be pretty hard to figure out what the exact ratio is. Like when I say it's 2.3 to one or 2.6 to one, like I think a lot of people would look at this ratio of 70 to 30 and say, okay, it's somewhere between two to one and three to one because two to one would be a $60 pot and three to one would be a $90 pot if, if we're calling a $30 bet. So, usually you're just going to be able to kind of figure out, unless again, you're good at mental math, you're usually just going to be able to figure out what it's between. And as we're going to see, that's going to be close enough. For instance, knowing that it's between two to one and three to one, I mean, that's going to be very helpful, even if you don't know exactly what it is to one tenth of a decimal place. For instance, on this last one, where the numbers aren't quite as round, well, you can see that the final pot size is going to be 196, and we're calling 53. So if we were getting 3 to 1, the final pot size would have to be 159. If we we're getting 4 to 1, the final pot size would have to be 53 times 4, or 212. So the pot odds we can see 
are somewhere between three to one and four to one. And I think most people probably have enough math facility where they can see it's a little closer to four to one than it is to three to one. So you could probably come pretty close to this 3.7 to one estimate in your head.